This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Yeah, and I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, Jason Glick. Um, all right, so uh, what are you going to talk about tonight? Hey, so I got an oldie but a goodie here. Got um, got the original Gunsmith Cats by um, Kenichi Sonoda. And yeah, you know what else you have here? What? You have Myron. Yes. Yay. Hey, Myron. How you doing, Jason? Yeah, good to have you back. Good to be back, sir. <laughs> and we have other nameless um, participants here. Kind of like the, like the options in Gradius. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Let's introduce yourself. So, Gunsmith Cats, well, we yeah. were watching some of the anime. Uh, yeah. Well, I've seen it all. I was just showing a little bit to, to them. Yeah. And we'll talk about the anime in a little bit. But first, let me just talk, let me just reiterate the fact that, you know, like, if you've been following my, my posts on, on the website, then you'll notice that, like, I really, really hated the um, ending to um, to Burst, the sequel series that, that was finished, that they published, the Star Wars finished publishing this year. Just, I felt it just really dishonored the uh, the original series. And just like made its main main character seem like a complete idiot in the it's process. All over it. Exactly. Yeah. And um and like well and like I've, well, I've like really like the original series. Um I didn't actually bit bother to pick it up in the um, revised edition that Dark Horse has published because you know I already own the um the volumes, but now that Dark Horse put I I picked up the um four revised editions, which is basically like compressed series into that. God, I'm redundant here, god damn it. Anyway, Dark Horse was, was um, offering a sale on selling all four volumes like seventy percent off. So I figured, hey, I'll take the plunge. I'll go ahead and reread them. And hey, you know what? It it brings back lots of good memories like this. So, so here I am talking about it now. Okay. All right. Now, basically, this ser- series is about um two. This is about um R- Riley Vincent, a um a gunsmith in Chicago who also works works part time as a bounty hunter. She's a complete gun nut. It's like and it's like a crack and as crack shot as you'll get in it. It's like in any anime, anime or manga series. It's like in fact the series is kind of like the um, kind of the missing link between um between the old school girls with guns series like the Dirty Pair and the modern modern series iterations like Black Lagoon. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, it's like it's also like exemplifies like, Japan's fascination with America because this is one of the few um like anime series that I mean manga series that I've seen that takes place entirely in America. It's set in Chicago. And as such, focuses on on Riley's efforts to take down the uh, take down the various um, scumbags she she comes across. I mean, you get like crazy people like um, it's like um, bo- like the, like um, brother and sister killers Bonnie and Clyde, who um, in in her first case, Riley managed to um, cu- um, shoot, see, simply, like, shoot up on Bonnie's car to the point where it flips up and she loses a couple limbs, and then she takes up she gets like a mo- like a nice molly wire um, like th- like thumb extension and a. Uh, it's like and then like a like a nice machine gun in her leg to take on like for her return return engagement with Rally. Like it's just fun stuff like that. And then you get later storylines when you get like um Gray, like who's basically like your big scary black dude, um who's like who is just like who's just like I'm out to um, beat the crap out of everyone and just dominate everyone everyone in his path. And and Riley takes out his arm, he winds up getting a sword arm as well. So it's just like real over the top over the top action in that sense. Ooh, I have to interject on that, like yes. what you what you mentioned earlier about, about the big scary black dude. Not the big scary scary black dude, because I'm one too. <laughs> but uh, uh, who's who's the artist of this manga? Artist is Kenichi Sonoda. Like you you mentioned before, like how how he uh, incorporates like American culture into mm-hmm. this manga, which you know you rarely see in manga. But like looking at it, I. Uh, I love the way he drew. I love the way he drew his cars in the manga. Like they, drew, mm-hmm. would they drive a Shelby Cobra? Sh- Sh- um, Riley drives a Shelby Cobra GT five hundred. Right. Like I love. Like this man obviously has an eye for detail. On you know, it looks like on him because he has more than you know just the Shelby mm-hmm. in the series. And you just see the way he designs the cars and just the way he designs the cities of Chicago. Like I really love the style he has, like depicting America. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, it, it, uh, and you know the character the characters are well like really good designs. I mean, I didn't read a lot of this manga, but um, just skimming through volume one, which Mr. Murphy uh, has here, like I really enjoyed his style, and that's something I really like to pick up and uh, read for mm-hmm. myself. Which is, um, it's not actually trivial um, for a Japanese manga artist to do American depictions. I mean, you know, they have to be mm-hmm. able to know the skyline, for example. Exactly. Right. All of the detail. 
It's not just something they can go, oh, I'm going to look at this picture. Okay, yeah, sure, you know. Exactly. And it's like, it, it, it's like and he also, like, uh, also, like, it's, he also does a good job of, like, showing his gun fetish as well. Because, I mean, good lord. Hey, I, like, he talks about all the, like, all the awesome guns. Like, I know that, hey, if I ever get a handgun, I'll want something like the, uh, like the CZ75 that um, that Riley uses because it's apparently like the, be- like the most badass handgun you will ever you'll ever see. He just puts that kind of that amount of detail, like from the cars to the handguns. I mean, he'll just go off on just like talk about why the handguns are great. I mean, at one point Riley, um, she winds up having to like swipe a like a like a perps um, um, Saturday Night Special in order to take out this um, hitman, and she's like, "Oh crap! I can't even! I have to get like within twenty yards to kill this guy um, with this with this some um, shitty ass gun." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's like the series is all about just like um, delivering like real high octane American blockbuster thrills. I mean, it's it's normal because like at the time it was like really one of the um, few, if only like a manga series being published in America that actually dealt with an American setting. Right. Yeah, it's like I think that's one of the reasons why it's like it's like it's for its like a popularity and it's like just it's um, how it managed to like entrench itself like in like in fandom as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean the stories themselves. I mean, it's like like you get like. Like I said, you have Riley facing off against like the biggest and baddest that um, Chicago has to offer. Big yep. black guy. Yeah, big black, big big scary black guy, and also her um, her nemesis, um, Goldie Musso, who she's an Ita- she's an Italian um, psychopathic lesbian chemist. Wow. Who um for That's who, an yes, <laughs> 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 yeah, who first tries to um, bend Riley to her real by brainwashing her with drugs, and then coming back for a return engagement with. Um, with, but in order to break her um, without the drugs, but this time she comes back with her with Riley's dad in tow because she's man because he's become a hitman at the time that he's been away from her, and it's and um, but yeah, but um, then you also got like the other um, stories where um, Riley um, Riley and her crew came up with um, Bean Bandit, the um, master master delivery delivery man. Like he's he's kind of like the, like the real gray area of the series. Like he will deliver anyone, be it um, be it um, people, be it. Be it weapons, be it drugs, like for any for any price, and he is he is badass. I mean, like he it's like he it's like he, his driving skills are legendary. It's like he's kind of like um like it's like like Burt, Burt Reynolds on um, Smoking the Bandit, just like um like times ten. That's <laughs> better than David Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what kind of car does he drive? Yeah. Oh damn it! It's like if I remember exactly what car he drives. Um, I tell you, but he, but at one point he drive, he um gets this, he gets this um really badass um bull, bulletproof car called that he likes to call the the buff, like as a, as, a, as an African Cape Buffalo, the buff, the buff. yeah. My next car I'm gonna call the buff. It's the diesel cars. Yeah, yeah. The bean bands. Oh. Here's here's the specs for um for Bean's car, um blue printed blue printed four twenty seven block with a supercharger, um five hundred bhp bulletproof, bulletproof body from the from the ground up, the buff as an African Cape Buffalo, and it's like it's just um like re- like as as slick as all get out. So it's like, cool. at one at one point in in volume four they. The only way that people were able to get in, get inside the car was by scoring the um, the window with with a knife in order to, br- to break down the bulletproofing. <laughs> so like I'd love to have some something, something like that. So I just like plowed through everyone on the ninety one on the way to work. Exactly, so, yeah. and you need that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but it means like the stories themselves. I mean, like they're big um, America, like high blockbuster, high octane entertainment. And um, but the thing is. I have one complaint about the series, but I'm rereading it now, because like I me, mean, like, I read this originally read this series almost almost a decade ago, like, and I'm now rereading it now. It's like I'm surprised at just how little depth it actually has. So, I mean, it's really it really is just like designed to like show you like the yeah, yeah, just action just action and and thrills, but it's very very little character. I mean, you got Riley Vincent, and uh, but she's only really characterized through her um like through her actions. I mean, just like you know, she's like a She's she's a righteous indiv- individual, but she, but she also like she, she's also a complete complete gun nut and devoted to her job. And there's really nothing else to her beyond that. From what we see, you got her partner Minnie Mae Hopkins, who's a, bu- a complete bomb nut, and also um um Sonoda's um Lolicon um like character here. She's a mostly reformed prostitute as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you've got Wait, uh, what? <laughs> mostly reformed prostitute. Mostly, mostly reformed. reformed. That likes bombs. 
Yeah. Well, no, actually, yeah, and she also likes likes Japanese guys as well. Yeah, and then you've got um, like Becky, their um, their hacker friend, who just like will, who like will help them out, but will always attach a price to it. And um, and Misty, their cat, cat burglar friend, who who also who also likes the ladies, and like Bean Bandit, who like he's a delivery driver. Yeah, Roy Coleman, her contact on the Chicago police, who's just a. I mean, he's it's kind of funny because like if this because like Roy seems like if this is another series that that started like you know like a hotshot bounty hunter guy. Um, then Roy Coleman probably would have been a chick um, in in that version because he's just kind of like there to, like to provide support on the it's like on the police it's like on the police force. I mean, he's just he's a kind of a th- really again, it's like he's got kind of a thankless job, you know. I mean, he just shows up to like help help advance the plot, and that that's about it. But more often than not, but still, it's like I don't know. It's like I like I, said, I enjoyed reading it again, revisiting things. But I don't know. So on one hand, I I kind of appreciate the um, what we get in like. In its, in its modern day equivalent of Black Lagoon, in my opinion, right. is that we get like lots more moral ambiguity, more it's like more more depth and more more character development here. So like I me, mean, like I it's like it's a nice trip down memory lane. It's like I recommend picking it up because it's still like has even if you don't buy, find it on sale, it's still a very good volume value for its um like even if you buy it at full price because it's like seventeen bucks for like over four hundred pages. Yeah, and that's um that's a compilation of what like what uh, three volumes at least. Yeah, it's like they. It's like vo- like um, each like each volume collects like two and a third volumes of the uh, of the manga. So, yeah, and um, the also also the last volume also gives you a special bonus. It gives you um, Sonoda's original Bean Bandit story, Riding Bean. Mm, yes, yes. Yeah, this story um, actually was the genesis of Gunsist Cats mm-hmm. because um, like he created because he originally created um, Bean first. But then, um, once the magazine that he was publishing it folded, and he couldn't um, bring Bean back for legal reasons, he decided to create um, create Gunsmith Cats instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, so, like these four, so, like the four chapters we have at the end of Volume Four are are unfinished, but they're still a nice little bonus. I mean, they nice, they're a nice little extra they have. I mean, that's exemplifies like why I like getting these um, these four volumes right here. Ooh. Yeah. Now going from manga to anime. Yes. Are all four volumes? Of this manga covered in the anime series, did they cover everything? Not at all, really. In like, fact, but that's not a bad thing, mm-hmm. because really, it's like because you know when it comes to like doing it, because for the type of anime adaptation that they did for Guns with Cats, I prefer this vastly to the to the kind of um, adaptations we got that the Japan churned out in the '90s. Because really, what you get in the '90s were just like like a two or three part OVA series that just yeah. basically like had like like a certain part of the manga. Um, a, like and they just say, like, oh, it's kind of like it's, they're just like really glorified ads for it. But then with with Guns of Katso, they did a three part um, original episode, like original story for it. They actually did do did uh, do, did do a great job of encapsulating all the charms and appeal of the series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've watched like a, a you know a little bit of the anime. Are you telling me that it wasn't an anime series? It was more OVA. No, translation? no, no, like. Typical twenty-five episode season anime. Regrettably, no, no, strictly an OVA. Mm-hmm. That sucks. Yeah, but on the other hand, it's like it's. I like the OVA because basically, if you like, if you read, watch the OVA, it's it's great, it's great stuff. And like you, and if you like it, you can go and check out the. Um, you think, hey, I like this. Where can I get more? Mm-hmm. Then you can just go right. Right to the manga, right. So and if you a little taste from the anime, yeah. And basically, if you like the manga, then you just go and pick up the um, the OVAs for a nice for a nice story that basically distills on um, the best parts of the series into three episodes. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's kind of the approach I'd like to see employed more often for like lengthy series like like this. Like if you can't get a proper a proper story, then just give it a nice um, like side story that fits in with the with the main series. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And and since it was an OVA or whatever you want to call it, um, mm-hmm. they were able to dedicate more time to to you know to the to the look of it. Yes. Right. Because the animation quality for nineties it was great from what I saw. It was very tight, especially the car chase scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Usually very with nice. uh, television production, it, 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 the quality does go down for anime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Television series, I should say. Yeah, first episode is usually awesome, but then, yep. yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I mean, I would, I would like to see. Like, it would be nice if they did like a like full series adaptation for the uh, from regular Guns with Cat series. Like that, I think that would definitely work. Um, not as much for Burst because I don't know. Like with Burst, I've got 
let's just say it, it ventures into the realm of like I've got ideas for how they could how they could improve on things. Now, burst, like I, I know we talked about this earlier in the mm-hmm. day, but burst, what what was that? Was that like a continued like? Burst was like a is last it, minute continuation. No, it was a, it was a full on sequel series. I mean, okay. it the, the series ended um and it ended on a ended like on a real on a like relative like conclusive on a, like. The series ended um, like normally, you know. It's like yeah. they just had like a nice closing chapter, like wrap things up, good, good and all. But they also, but hey, you know, if he wanted to pick things up later on, like he could. With Burst, though, it started the first volume. It was kind of like they, uh, oh, it's like hey, it's great. There's more Guns with Cats. I mean, this like oh yeah, it's Guns with Cats, but it's kind of like just exactly how I remember. It. It's like like meet up with an old friend, realizing they have nothing new to say. You know, like Dragon Ball GT. <laughs> I'll take your word on that. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, and then you, yeah, and then you, uh, then like reading up to volume three or so, then you like realize like, oh yeah, you know, if there's something to say, nothing new to say. It's like it's still got some of the same same fun action and all. Mm-hmm. And then you get to volume four where he brings back Goldie after she was um, mostly dealt with at the end end of the series, and he has to make Raleigh seem like a complete idiot for bringing her for restoring her memory. And then volume four, just like volume five, bring, like basically betrays um, her character even further by basically establishing, oh wait, no, Goldie isn't a bad villain. She's basically a good one by saying, by saying she's just trying to like bring order to the un- underworld and all. And oh, just, that's nicer. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> and then also by, by um by showing that her brainwashing of Misty was was just, oh, you know, like Misty's fine because she's she realizes on um, what because because like Goldie was able. Goldie brainwashed her, and then like they weren't able to bring her back because they because her, her brainwashing is too is, is too well done and all. It's just kind of like it's just so depressing and just feels like a complete betrayal of of, of, of Riley's character and ev- and everything. It's uh, the, the the original creator. Yeah, it's it's so what, guess, like he yeah he this he this is Ken, Kenichi Soto like still he was he did the sequel series well. This is all him. Mm-hmm. Sorry, like no. And but it's like I it's it's just really depressing. It's one of the worst things I've read from Dark Horse. It's one of the worst things that it's in the running for worst series of the year next to Kick Ass. Yeah. So so it's like I was like just but I'm gonna, I can't blame Dark Horse for publishing it because I mean it's based on the original series they had said oh yeah there's another Dark another Guns of the Cat series out in Japan but we're not gonna bring it over because it sucks. I would have been like dude like let me make that decision for myself. Mm-hmm. But you know they did. I read it, and it's like you know, I got no one, to, no one to blame for its for um for supporting this crappiness besides me. So right. yeah, so in the end, like listen, um, the guns, with, the revised edition of Guns with Cats, great, fu- great fun, great fun stuff. Not the deepest thing you'll ever read, but still a lot of fun. Um, just ignore the sequel series, and you'll have a good time. The anime, though, like if you can find the DVD, it's highly recommended picking up because it's out of cause it's out of print and its publisher. Well, they've um. It's like they've undergone, undergone a paradigm shift. ADV. Yeah. Well, the four company formerly known as ADV, now known as Section 23. Correct. If they even still have the rights to it. Yeah, it sounds like Prince. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and on that note, we're going to go ahead and call it a night, everyone. All right. We'll see you later. Later. Bye.